the grass Lunatic is on the grass Remembering Welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today I'm going to look at another fountain pen on loan from a local pen friend, Janice Butterworth. This is the Wingsong 618 Piston Filler. Or should I say, this is a bag of pieces that, when assembled correctly, in the right sequence, with the right amount of patience, has the potential to be a Wingsong 618. I'm sure Janice will forgive my little bit of teasing here, but the pen did arrive in this bag completely disassembled. I found that a really cool challenge, like a Rubik's Cube. The only difference is I was able to solve this puzzle. I assume that Janice probably got it to pieces but never got it back together again. And there are no instructions, of course, on how to put it back together. So, let's sort out these pieces and see if we can get this pen back together and writing right now. <laughs> So here we are with a, the uh, big bag of fountain pen. Oh, this is the best pizza in a cup ever. This guy's unbelievable. He ran the old cup of pizza guy out of business. What I want to do today is put this pen together first, then go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then do a writing sample. After the writing sample, I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like about this pen. But first, let's make a pen out of these parts. They tore my legs off and they threw them over there. Then they took my chest out and they threw it over there. Well, and... that's you all over. <laughs> the good thing is, you can actually take this pen to pieces. The original Parker 51 is not so compatible with taking to pieces. So let's see what we've got here. So we have a cap. We have a body. We have a section sleeve. Transplant my head onto another body. We have an end cap, a couple of sleeves, and a piston. And we have nib feed and collector. So here's a photograph of all of these pieces together. Uh, actually not together, apart, but together. And let's uh, start by looking at the the nib and feed parts first. And we'll concentrate on this nib. So here you can actually see this small nib. And when we look at it carefully, we notice it is a mini fude. So this is, I'm assuming that uh, Janice got this pen from Bobby, either on Etsy or on eBay, uh, because this is the same as her Jinhao 51A nib, which was a Bobby Bent nib as well, mini fo fu mini fude nib. I originally thought that this might never have been inked up before, but I'm seeing some remnants of some ink here. So uh, it's been taken apart and very, very carefully cleaned. So, but you can take it apart further than this to replace the nib on these. And I use a rubber band for this. And you put the rubber band around here and squeeze. There's no fins here to, to break, so that's that feed is actually a pretty solid piece. So you could just pull that out. And the little nib comes off of that plastic feed. And there is that plastic feed. There is the channel along there. And when you're putting it back together again, you just line up. The nib and feed as if it was a normal one and hold it together like that and then push it into the collector. 
But there's a little notch in the collector, which is right there. You see that? You line that up with the little slit in the nib, and in it goes. Then you can put it into the body of the pen. Just slides in like that, and then slide on the section sleeve. But you'll find out that you've got a problem when the nib doesn't line up with the section. So what we have to do is unscrew this, turn this around, and screw it back down again, and see how far off we are. Oh, looks like that's, oh, I was not a bad guess. Well, look at that right on. Now that was an accident. The previous time I did this, it's just slightly off. The previous time I did this, it was way off and I took oh, about four or five tries to get it lined up perfectly. Once I've got it perfectly, however, don't continue putting your pen back together again. Take a marker and mark where that uh, collector fits into the body of the pen. So line it up there's a line right there, and get yourself a Sharpie and an X-Acto knife. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to score that line into the body. I'm going to do this off camera because I can't see. And then I'm going to take my marker and I'll fill in that score with a little bit of black. I don't know how long that will stay there, but certainly it'll stay there until which point I clean it out again. And then I can just push that right in there and screw it down and I know that I'm bang on every time. Just like that. So problem one solved. Now we have to solve the other end. So let's look at the pieces for the piston. Now the piston end goes in this end of the barrel and we have a piston rod, a uh, blind cap screw thread, a blind cap for the piston, a gold ring, and a sleeve with a notch in it. So without a manual you have to sort of figure out how all these pieces go together. So the one piece that's difficult to figure out where it goes is this little sleeve here. And it goes on the piston rod, and it goes with the little rectangular uh, notch or slot in there towards the piston. So you fit that in there like that, because it's going to house the uh, screw thread for the blind cap. And this is how the piston works when you screw that on. And this little sleeve will actually fit inside the barrel here and there's a stop on there as well and so it keeps that because it's flatted it has flat sides on it it fits inside that barrel end and keeps the whole thing from turning but again it's it'll go on either way so it becomes a little bit confusing so the first thing you have to do is put that slot on the rectangular piston rod and then you're going to put this ring on your blind cap twist knob. So the twist knob has a little section here for where the blind cap fits on top of it and then this part goes onto the piston rod and then eventually inside the barrel but it has to screw into the barrel so then when you have the screw thread facing the piston so we're going this way into the body of the pen with the nib this way that means the threads have to be facing the nib so you put that on that way again it's another part that can go on backwards so get that lined up so the threads are going that direction You've got your sleeve on with the 
open side to accept this part here and then we can screw that in there and it goes right inside that sleeve there we go and then the blind cap will fit on the end of the turning knurled knob now this is where it can get a little bit confusing what's the matter pop i'm confused because unless you have instructions, the instructions are all in Chinese, um, and the pictograms on the instructions aren't very good either. Now, I've not seen these instructors, instructions, but I have instructions similar to those on the Wingsung 698, which has a similar mechanism of a cap that clicks in and out into a locking and unlocking position. It took me a long time to figure this whole assembly out because those instructions in Chinese didn't tell me either. And so it's a process of trial and error. But there are two little notches, two little tabs. Get the light correctly here. There we go. You can see that little tab there and the other one corresponding up there. And they fit into corresponding little tabs that are very difficult to see. There they are. There's one. A little notch right there. And a little notch right there. So you want to line those up. So you find... There's a tab. And I want to find a notch. This is very difficult to do over the camera. And then once you find them, you're going to push them together. And when you push them together, there's no seam... So you can see there's no seam between that ring and that blind cap. You've got it right if it snaps into that position. And then you pull on it and it releases that to turn the knob. And you push on it and it locks it. So the knob won't turn and you can actually screw this whole assembly into the pen or unscrew it to disassemble it. So at this point we're going to slide the piston into the pen and then because this is locked down we can screw the whole assembly into the pen and then we're going to pull on that to release that knob and the knob will move the piston back and forth to be able to fill the pen and then when you're done you give it a push and sometimes you have to turn the, piston, the little knob a little bit to find that notch. That, again, was something that I had a real difficulty with my 698 on figuring out. But that's the way you do it. And now we've got the whole pen together. We take the cap. We screw that down. And voila! There is no charge. We have a completed... Wingsong 618 piston filler. So now we'll come back and we'll do a parts and features before I ink it up. Okay, I should mention that uh, when you've got it apart, you should put a little silicone grease on that piston. So again, this is locked down, so I'm turning the gold ring. I'm not turning the piston at this point. So I'm going to unscrew this, and once it releases, pull. And that keeps this whole assembly together again so it doesn't fall apart. And I'm going to put a little silicone grease on that. Just a little dabble, do ya? A little cream, a little dabble, do ya? And then we're going to push that piston back in again. Screw down the gold part. Pull that cap back to disengage those tabs and free up the piston and then slide it back and forth a couple of times get that piston working good there we go and we snap the lock back in place now that we've got the pen together let's take a look at the parts and features of this pen the Wingsung 618 is a hooded nib pen closely resembling the Parker 51 Wingsung has made a more modern version of the classic pen by making a number of upgrades. 
Overall, this is a black injection molded pen with gold colored hardware and a clear plastic piston ink chamber. At a quick glance, the overall shape is very similar to a Parker 51. We have a Parker style arrow clip, but the finial is just domed and does not have that Parker 51 uh, conic shaped jewel finial. This more closely resembles a Parker Sonnet. Here's a Parker Sonnet, and here's the Wing Sung 618. And apart from the embedded little black jewel there, the shape is very reminiscent of the clip on the Parker Sonnet. The cap tapers up to a solid gold band, which is embossed with Wing Sung. 618 on one side and made in China on the other. That helps the buyer realize they aren't buying a brand new Parker 51, a model that Parker hasn't manufactured for 48 years. Buyer beware. The cap ring tapers down to the barrel, which is straight to about here, where it begins to taper away, and then we have a gold ring right there and the tapering blind cap. So the barrel shape itself is completely different from the Parker 51 which tapers gently along the length of the barrel. The cap unscrews with one just slightly over one turn to reveal the long slender tapering section classic of the hooded nib of the Parker 51. And here we see the small steel and upturned mini footy nib and I believe it's a fine on this pen but we shall see. The cap posts deeply and securely and does not unbalance this pen. The pen is well balanced in the hand again a classic Parker 51 feel where you can grip that close to the nib far away from the nib and it's plenty long enough uncapped but this pen begs to be posted and writes very nicely in the posted configuration. Now let's see some size comparisons. Okay here we have the Wingsung 618 with a Hero 616, a Jinhao 51A, a Parker Sonnet and a Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's see them posted. Okay, so here are the five pens posted and we'll see that the major difference between them is that the Parker Sonnet and the Pilot Metro both have number five size open nibs whereas these top three the 618, the 616, and the 51A all have hooded nibs. You can see that they post in different sizes as well. So the 618 is closer to the Parker Sonnet in terms of its postability. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing sample portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Wingsung 618. And it is a fine steel mini food a nib and let's check the wetness this is very wet as to line variation well I'm not going to push on this nib because I'm not going to get any line variation that way I'm going to show you how the mini Fude nib works 
here's a vertical line and here is a horizontal line you can see that just by holding the nib in that direction you get a wider line when you move this way and a thinner line when you move vertically. It's quite interesting. I find it easier to get line variation that way because uh, you don't have to put any pressure on the nib. And let's listen to it right. You might be able to hear that, but there's quite a bit of feedback there, especially in the horizontal direction. It's not unpleasant, but there is quite a bit of feedback. In reverse writing, is surprisingly possible. I was surprised. I didn't think that many Fude Nib would write upside down like that, but it's actually, as you can see, it writes 360. So no matter which way you have the nib, I'm going to turn it sideways. Now it's upside down, now it's the opposite sideways, and now it's like 45, and now it's flat. Very interesting. It writes 360 degrees. I might have to get me one of these Bobby nibs. Uh, unfortunately, Bobby has shut down his eBay store completely, and he's no longer shipping to or selling to Canada. Uh, and that's the same with uh, Easy Buy on Etsy um, and on eBay, not shipping to Canada anymore. So we're going to have to find a way around that. And for some quick writing... As you can see, it's keeping up extremely well. Now, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, there are a number of things to like. First of all, I like that this is an upgraded Parker 51 style pen. And by upgraded, I mean that there are a number of improvements. The piston filling system, for example, is an improvement. It takes a lot of ink. I'd say that's about one to one and a half milliliters of ink. I haven't measured it, but that's what it looks like to me. Uh, I also like the fact that the, that the blind cap for the piston control locks, so you don't have an accident. Some piston fillers are a problem in that you cap them, you post them like that, and if you turn that cap while you're posting it, it turns the piston and squirts ink all over the place. The Moonman T1 is an example of that. I like the fact that this body here on this particular model, not on all of these, but many of the models available of the 618 are in sort of a transparent plastic, but this one is absolutely clear. So you can see your ink supply and you can see when you're filling the pen how well you're doing as well. That's very nice. I like the fact that it comes apart in pieces in a lot of pieces, of course, but uh, nevertheless, you can take this pen apart relatively simply uh, to clean it out. And that was one of the problems with the Parker 51 style pen was getting that hooded section off that pen was a real challenge. And actually, Parker didn't want you to do that. If you needed your nib replaced or you needed to get in to change the feed or the collector system in there, you needed to send it back to Parker and they would heat that um, section up to remove the ink and then replace the nib or do whatever they needed to do and then replace that uh, hood on there and actually re-glue it. 
so that uh, you couldn't get at it again. This makes it very simple to pull all those pieces apart, change the nib, clean out the collector, clean out the feed, uh, and all of those things. And I like the mini foodie nib on this, that little bent nib. Now, I'm not sure whether you can get this everywhere. Uh, I know that Bobby provided these pens, and I'll put a link on here for uh, Bobby's uh, site on uh, Etsy because he no longer exists on eBay. Uh, but you can get this bent nib on his uh, pens on his Etsy site if you live in the United States. Uh, but that mini foodie nib is very interesting. As you can see, the line variation I'm getting here is it's very, very cool. I realize uh, now that I just failed to tell you what this ink is. Okay. We'll do things a little bit backwards. The ink There we go. The ink today is Robert Oster. Bondi Blue. And here is the test card for it. And here it is beside Erosuzuku Kanpeki, one of my favorite inks. And a new ink to me, the J. Urbain 1798 Kyanite du Nepal. This is a new ink. This sample was provided me, to me by Susan in Florida. Thank you, Susan. Interesting inks. You can see on the Robert Oster Bondi Blue, there's a lot of red sheen there. Uh, and a very, very turquoise kind of color. I like it. And continuing with some of the things I do like about this pen, I like the fact that it posts deeply and securely and is well balanced in the hand, whether it, it is uh, posted or unposted, very much like the Parker 51. Uh, the cap is a little bit heavier than those pens, so it does, it doesn't back weight the pen, but it does feel a little heftier than those pens do. But I like that balance. Now, as to some dislikes. Well, I dislike the fact that it is a complicated system to learn. And it's not really the pen's fault because those innovations, as I said, I like those things. But the problem is that it's a Chinese pen with no documentation. Well, this was, pen is on loan to me, so there was no documentation. But I know the documentation that comes with it. And in Chinese, uh, with no translation, it's very difficult to figure out what's going on. I'll give you an example here. This is the 698 piston filler. And this has the same system as the 618, where you pull that cap out to turn the piston. It had the same instructions that the 618 did. And they're as indecipherable as the 618s. But take a look at the end of this cap. I don't know whether you can see it or not. There's arrows. There's one. See an arrow? And an arrow? That's supposed to tell you that you're supposed to pull this that way. Well, how would you know that? But you pull that that way, and then you have to turn it a little bit, and it snaps closed. It works exactly the way this system does. You pull it out. And you turn this, and it'll turn the piston, and then you push it back, and it locks. Um, unless you know that, this pen can be quite disappointing. And of course, once you've taken it apart, you really have to keep track on all your pieces and how they go together. The orientation of the pieces, all of that has to be kept together. When I got this bag of pen together in all of its pieces, and I worked on putting it together. It took me quite a while. Now, I enjoy solving puzzles, so it wasn't that frustrating to me. Uh, and I had a little bit of experience from the 698, but boy, if you had that to pieces just to clean it and then you couldn't get it back together again, I could see ta someone taking this $13 pen and just throwing it out. So that's, that's a disappointing thing, and the learning curve on it is a little bit steep. The last thing that I probably uh, don't like so much is it's a little bit scratchy compared to a say a pen BBS um, Waverly 
Pen BBS Waverly nib is very smooth. Doesn't give me quite this much line variation though. Uh, this one is a little bit scratchy this way and uh, and has a lot of feedback to it. If you like a lot of variety in your in your lines, if you're going to sketch with this pen, or you like this kind of paintbrush kind of an effect, uh, then this pen can be really um, a nice everyday pen for you. It takes a lot of ink. Uh, it's relatively inexpensive. As I say, $13 US, comes in a variety of colors. So it really is a terrific pen. And I was expecting not to like it, but I do like it very much. I think it's very attractive as well. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get notification when a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.